Right, I'm going to have a go at the Guardian's cryptic crossword for Friday, June 28th, set today by Paul. Let's see what Paul has in store. Crooner cradles a very, very young chick on bended knee. So the definition is either crooner, uh, Sinatra comes to mind. Um, obviously cradles very, very... Yeah, so well, very can be V, so is it a short crooner and you put in V, V? Can young be Y? But that seems very unlikely. And chick, and it's going to mean on bended knee, proposing, fiance. Um, no, not seeing it. How about loss of nude? confronts that Spanish cubist. Well, cubist I've seen be misleading in the past where it turns out to do with a Rubik's Cube, but I merely think of George Brack as one of the cubists. It does end in K, Q-U-E, which I think can be Oh, you, you remember Manuel from Faulty Towers always saying K, K, but I think it could mean that as well as what. But then how is uh, BRA loss of nude? Other than, is it saying if you lose your bra, you're nude? You're topless, maybe, loss. Yeah, I'm... yeah I don't quite get that. So Brack may be wrong, but um, what would that do to our crooner? Oh, Der Bingle, as my father used to call him, Bing Crosby. Um, oh my goodness. Um, I think very, very young chick is an egg. Oh, that is... Um, uh, audacious. You have to admire it. I mean, you can question if it's playing fair, but I suppose it is a very, very young shake. It's still an egg. And going inside of Bing, it becomes begging on bent. If you go to somebody on bended knee, then you are begging. Goodness gracious. All right. How about animal heard within with a song? to be reasonable. I'm thinking it's going to mean reasonable. That's a word for reasonable beginning with G. Now there is a question mark, so yeah, I, I'm wondering. Um, but I think it might start with a homophone of an animal. Oh, a song could be an air. Um, what other things can a song be? No, not uh, seeing it. How about weakness shown by patriarchal seat of old empire? Um, I'm thinking it might be a seat of an old empire. Oh, again, we have the dreaded question mark, so maybe it's an old throne, or... Yeah, um, or just maybe it's an old empire. Maybe patriarchal seat could be Paz something, Paz rump, Paz ass, Paz, or Daz, D-A-S. Oh yeah, and maybe the maybe it's actually going to be weakness, and it's shown by, or you achieve a word for weakness by this something something. Oh, what old empire like Incan, Mayan? Now it's going to have to have some English ending that sounds like a, I suppose an abstract noun, Asian or something. No, not see it. Adding to visage nicely, or visage, I'm thinking of the group, I think. 
fade to gray, um, adding to visage nicely, referring to makeup. Again, a question mark. Oh my goodness. I think he may be overdoing them today. Um, oh, something to, referring to makeup. I'm thinking of jeans. Yeah, in fact, um, it's a hidden clue. I like um, the Cryptic Mystics videos. He is now ringing a bell when he spots a hidden clue. I think that's a really nice touch, and it's a very nice sounding bell he's using. Um, but hidden within visage nicely, we have a word I'm not familiar with, but um, just because I saw makeup and I thought, okay, the question mark means it's not going to be a little bit of slap that you apply, uh, but genetic makeup, so I suppose genic is to do with your genes. Um, now let's go back to the, no, no, let's carry on with the downs, let's do the top ones anyway. Long facial hair, bald on top. I wonder if it could, oh, hold on, sorry, I'm I've done that before. I clicked on five down and I start reading six downs glue. All right, China or Chile on the outside, breaking clear. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm wondering if it's going to be some short thing for China, which could be the country or the um, uh, tableware, um, and then maybe OR, but then you put Chile, which, what's the abbreviation for Chile? You put it on the outside, is it CL? And it's going to mean breaking clear, or maybe it's going to be China, no? All right, let's go to the one I started reading out, long facial hair bald on top. I'm wondering if it could be a five letter word for facial hair and we lose its first letter it is bald on top and it's going to mean long which could be a verb to yearn. Oh um, they often use ache as a verb to long for something and I think the facial hair is a tash. And if you lose the T, you get ache. All right, let's try to, I'll try to read the right one. Little taste, in an elephant's tusks, might you say? Hmm, I wonder if this could just be a cryptic definition. Elephant's tusks, I'm thinking ivory. Uh, but might you say possibly a homophone? Little taste, um, unsavory. Only in the American spelling. Um, Little taste bland, might you say, no, I don't get that one. Uh, transported cases, fully made. Uh, no, I'm not seeing that one. I'm thinking transported could be an anagram indicator, but we don't have a good eight letter total anywhere. All right, back to the acrosses. Farmer detailing, oh, bearer of small vegetarian gifts. Well, detailing, I've seen enough times now that I immediately think we're removing the last letter, the tail of some word. Now, is that going to be farmer or bearer? And then of small could be simply S. What I yeah I don't think vegetarian gifts could be a definition. Does it mean a farmer? 
No, don't see it. Jelly, equally good with custard or cream originally. All right, so originally makes me think we're going to use the first letter of at least cream. Um, jelly, is that the definition? What is a gel? Oh, aspic is a type of jelly used in uh, cuisine, right? Um, Lark's Tongues in Aspic, of course, by King Crimson. Uh, so equally, I think, might be as good with custard or cream originally. Yeah, maybe it's just giving us two words that start with C. But then pie has to be good. Oh, well, is there a, um, a British slang? Everything was pie, meaning everything was good. That's ringing a vague bell, probably from some book I read in my youth. I'll leave it in for now. Um, how, what would that do for either an animal or, I think, to be reasonable? No, not seeing either one. No, I something C does seem. Oh, uh, there is some word for weakness. Um, not incipient in, uh, in, well, insipid, I suppose, maybe I'm thinking of, but um, no, not seeing it. All right. Point thrown out. Oh, so that's an interesting first part of the hyphenated word. Point. Oh, north. Ah. Ah, yes, this is a clever, a little devious. I think it's northwest, which is a point of the compass. And out can mean an anagram, and thrown is an anagram of north plus w. So we have to fill in the rest of the w to be west. Hence, I think, the uh, question mark alerting us that there's a little bit of skullduggery going on here. All right, sudden twists due next bandaging muscle. Um, I'm wondering if twists could be an anagram indicator. Maybe it means sudden, something like un, unprovoked or un, un uh, heralded on, on something, but I'm not seeing it. And then we need 10 letters, so. Oh, maybe sudden twists. Yeah, maybe, but um, not getting it. We may have to put some muscle, like an ab, inside of words meaning due next. Oh, maybe it's the anagram of due next. And we do twist that and it goes around a short muscle. Oh, lat, of course, is another one. Oh, a peck might be where we get the C from, and it means sudden, oh, unexpected, yes, <laughs> all right. Ah, I'm proud of my detective work to spot the C and think of the muscle for it. Uh, so I think it is the anagram of due next around the peck. All right, charge speechify Liz's fella commonly. Now, is that um, Liz Truss, our uh, Elizabeth Taylor, oh, Liz Hurley, 
Well, she's no longer with Hugh Grant, of course. Um, commonly charged. Uh, speechifying makes me think it's going to be a homophone. Now, is it charge as in a financial charge? Uh, rate. Um, or it could be an electrical charge or a military charge. A lot of charges. Uh, legal. No, we'll go on. A tramp I trained, inspired by old fellow, qualified. Yeah, so I think A tramp I must be trained or anagrammed. And it's going to be inspired by, or we're going to put inside it, how many letters do we need? Four letters. Old fellow. So it might be O and uh, a Don, maybe. Our old fellow could be father. Uh, although I think that's usually old man is your father. Um, and of course, oh, fellow can be F. Could it be O L D F. But it's going to be qualified. Uh, so we will need, uh, I think, a D and an E uh, if it's going to be a past tense word like qualify. It doesn't have to be, but yeah, qualified now is that <laughs> qualified as in you qualified for something or qualified praise, maybe restricted in some way. No, not seeing it. Oh, here's a very short clue for an 11 word, 11 letter word, tolerate mug. Uh, presumably a double definition. Tolerate seems fairly clear. I don't think there's too many meanings. Uh, mug could be your face. Physiognomy, is that physiognomy? Um, or it could be a mug you drink out of, but I don't think so. Or to mug as a verb, to play around, fool around, make faces, mug. No, how about a bit screwed back, now enabled again. Ah. Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure where the definition is. Is it a bit? Screwed back could be the last letter of screwed, the D. Then now enabled again. Enabled again does sound like it could be the definition for a reword, RE, but then we only have two more letters. Or enabled again. Nope, don't see it. Uh, strike in Asia. Asia, excuse me. Case of those in Pakistani city not finishing work. Um, I'm thinking just from the wordplay in the middle, the case we've seen before is the outer letters. So of those would be T-E. And maybe we put that inside a Pakistani city, Lahore. Not finishing work might be W-O-R. But... That could be the definition, not finishing work. So what strike in Asia? Is that the definition? Maybe a very cryptic definition of, is it some um, weather related disaster? Or something military strike in Asia? No, let's go back to the downs. Um, oh, this, maybe I, I'm going to look up 
incipience and see exactly what it means. No, incipience is to do with something beginning um, at the beginning stages. So I did look up synonyms of weakness and I saw incapacity. So I think it's um, the seat of old empire, I think, is Inca City and patriarchal. Yeah, I think is you just put pa before city. And so I think the question mark is Paul acknowledging that's kind of weak. Um, he did it, I suppose, for the, the surface read. Um, but yeah, I think it's just Inca, pa, city, and you get incapacity. All right, uh, let's, oh, I'm thinking an animal could be a gopher. Heard with a song to be reasonable. Ah, yeah, I think because gopher sounds like go for, and if something goes for a song, it goes for a reasonable price. So to be reasonable is very cryptic and vague, and hence that question mark. Yeah, Paul is really giving us a Friday workout, as it should be, of course. It should be very difficult on Friday. Uh, nothing really coming to me for this one. Um, no. Okay, how about got trousers on? Lie, one lacking, if so. Um, it's a little bit of an awkward surface on this one, but got trousers on, lie, one lacking. Well, I'm thinking lie with one lacking would be just L-E. And I'm wondering if it's going to be some word that means if so, like um, otherwise or something. Yeah, but ending in L-E. And then what's got trousers on? <laughs> Pants. Um, Jeans, um, oh, something like, um, not bare legged. No, don't see it. Uh, peace covering biscuit, Bourbon might be in it. Well, uh, Bourbon, of course, is a type of biscuit. Haven't had one in a long time, not one of my favorites. Uh, I might appreciate it more now, but uh, anyway. Uh, but I'm wondering if it is some cocktail where bourbon might be in it. And we're going to, the wordplay is something for a piece, so which of course could be a chess piece. And it's going to cover a short word for a biscuit. Hmm. Bourbon might be in it. Yeah, I think I need some letters for that one. All right, cold and calculating people in on event. That's funny wording again, but people in on. Is it an event or is it cold and calculating maybe? No, nope. adventure tours always most odd. Well, could it be the odd letters from always most? Oh, or maybe tours always. Yeah, um, that would be T-U-S-L-A-S-O-T. I'm not seeing what that is as a uh, an adventure. Maybe the definition is most odd. Ah, maybe a word for adventure 
goes around always. Um, always could be ever, which poetically could be air, E-E-R. Yeah, most odd. Um, yeah, I'm leaning towards that, which means this would end in E-S-T. We'll see if they come in useful. Alas, I lament losing leader of a U.S. state. All right, I think it's lament is going to lose its leader, the L. And so then we have I plus A-M-E-N-T. And that's going to be anagrammed, I think, because of the alas. And it's going to mean of a U.S. state. Oh my goodness, I'm not seeing that. So I'm going to uh, pause and scribble it down on a piece of paper. And yeah, I suppose it's going to end in I-A-N or A-N. But um, what U.S. state is that? Ah, no, it's not lament. It's a word for lament. And in fact, this is a, a charade. Alas is O, I is I, and then lament is moan. And if it loses the M, then it becomes Ohioan, we, which we had recently with um, native of Cincinnati, I think was the uh, definition. All right. Laces in shoes. Oh, we had laces... Uh, I think just yesterday, right? Um, putting one liquid inside another. In shoes. Uh, I'm not seeing it. Oh, yes, yesterday was spikes. And I think spikes can be shoes with spikes that you use in various sports. Um, I'm going to leave it in. It looks like this could be uh, ship, chap, chop. Oh, how about a karate chop? Ah, yes, I think the Pakistani city is Karachi, which doesn't finish. Um, yes. We put the case of those inside Karachi, but it doesn't finish. Uh, and then work is an opus. We've seen that before, OP, and so we get our strike in Asia. My goodness. Uh, let's try this firing mechanism on gun initially for pistol. The way it's worded makes it sound like pistol is going to be the definition. But I'm not sure if that's... Oh, yeah, a Glock. That's clever. Um, I think the firing mechanism is being given as a lock. I suppose a flint lock. Um, I thought the lock was to stop the gun being fired, but I may be wrong. And then that goes on the initial letter of gun, and we get our Glock. Uh, laid back figure, one chilled surfer. I don't know what that could be. Yeah, not seeing it. Uh, last across, news items, though hot, replaced by the papers. Um, I was wondering if the definition could be news and the word tidings came to mind. Um, and then the wordplay would be items, though hot. Oh, so hot could be an H in some word, and that's going to be replaced. 
by the capers. Um, let me put in tidings and um, see what where there might be a have been an H that is now replaced by the oh I think it's um, yes it's things are items of course and you replace the H with ID. If someone asks for your papers, you might hand over your ID. All right, let's finish the downs. Uh, vacuous, aimless function in meeting place. Ooh, well, vacuous uh, can mean we empty out a word and just have its uh, outer letters, so aimless would become as now there's another question mark for meeting place uh, we had ascot recently otherwise i would never have uh, thought of it but that is a place for horse racing which can i think be called a meet um, so i'm wondering if cot can be a function i know there's cosine I think a cot is cotangent, if I'm remembering my mathematics correctly from a long time ago. Uh, we are past the 30 minute mark, so I will, excuse me, check this. It is right. All right, one final down. Holiday notes for business. Ooh, um... Are we going to put a short holiday and then some musical notes, maybe? And that's going to give us a business. Our, yeah, I think that's the only reading that makes sense, but I'm not thinking of a short holiday or even a good four-letter business other than firm. Of course, it doesn't have to be an entity. It could be just business in general, but I don't see it. Ooh. Oh, I missed this one somehow. Um, oh, yeah, because I jumped to the uh, pistol one. So unbending. Oh, I'm immediately seeing those letters thinking in elastic. And I also, when I read jerk, little jerk, I thought of a tick. So a line is bending. We start with the anagram of line. Um, when, ah, yes, that is as, and then little jerk is a tick. All right, I think that's the hardest part for beginners to cryptic crosswords is realizing when words are meaningful, like that little when contributed to the wordplay. Whereas given is just um, really saying after you have the line and the when uh, variations, now you have to give that the uh, tick. But um, I think it's just developing that kind of looseness of interpretation that allows your mind, when, when my, certainly when my mind is working well, I can... Uh, use induction as well as deduction to come up with the answer. Uh, and just a reminder, The Guardian does have this great uh, quick cryptic that comes out once a week. So if you're new to cryptic crosswords, I do recommend starting with that one. And there is a link in the description of this video. All right, let's go back up. I think now I've, unless I skipped something else, I think we've seen them all. Nothing new on that one. Still just these E's. Yeah, that top right corner is looking difficult. Ah, this is... Um, yeah, looking not the way I thought it was going to be. I thought a tramp I was going to be anagrammed on the outside. But now I realize, I think, inspired by means it actually has to go inside 
old fellow. Could that be chap? And that's going to mean qualified. Let me try the anagram helper and see even if I have the right number of letters. A tramp I plus champ. Looks like it's right. It just doesn't look very um, plausible as anagram fodder. I wonder, by the way, if uh, Tramp is put in there as a reference to the fellow setter, Tramp. And it should mean qualified. Now I keep saying Carpathian. No, I think I must be misreading the this doesn't look likely at all. Okay. Where else do I have uh, helpful letters? Oh, 13 down. There we go. Oh! Yeah, so I think it may be something legged. One lacking, if so. Um... Maybe it is bare-legged and say, and so the definition is got trousers on lie. In other words, no, you do have trousers on. It might be an and lit where the wordplay overlaps with the definition. One lacking if so. Um... I think, just because I need to move on, um, I'm going to try bare-legged, and let's uh, check this. It is correct, so, oh, hopefully 15 squared is back. It was down yesterday for maintenance, so I hope it's back and we can uh, see how this works. Um, got trousers on... Um, I'm wondering if bagged might have something to do with trousers. Isn't, um, when you remove somebody's trousers, didn't they, as a joke in the uh, olden days, they would call that debagged? Am I making that up or misremembering? So I'm thinking that might be something. Um, re could be on, and lie could be the lie without one. If so, yeah, I'm thinking that's as close as I'm going to get to it. All right, uh, qualified. We have an A, not terribly helpful. Um, where else can I go? Yeah, 16. Yeah, I'm thinking this is going to be cold and calculating, and it's going to be an ING word. Uh, scheming. People in on event. Um, I think just again, because of the time factor, I'm going to try that and check it. No. All right, I'm going to reveal it. Occasion. Oh, so it's an event. All right. Um, let's see then. Um, cold and calculating people in on. On might simply be on. Yeah, I'm not seeing that wordplay at all. Where's the people coming from? No. Nope. Anyway, let's try 27 now that we have the N something T. Oh, the T, of course, is a guess. Laid back figure. 
one chilled surfer. No. Well, the only thing I'm thinking is laid back might mean a reversal of a figure or a number. And if that was 10, then we would begin with NET. And then we might have maybe an I. R1 chilled could be something to do with ice. And it's going to mean a surfer, as in, oh, probably someone on the net. Um, oh, there is this word, a netizen, like a citizen. Uh, but I don't fully get that. Uh, so let's uh, check this. It is right. Um, that is just pure guesswork. Um, but so I think 10 is the laid back, or net is the laid back 10. Oh, one is I and chilled is Zen. You can use it as an adjective, of course, to describe somebody. All right. Oh, we get a nice Z in holiday notes for business. Oh. Does it have to be a double Z jazz? What else could it be? Let me pause and go through the alphabet. Well, I didn't go very far actually, because I, I just, my brain tells me jazz is the only one. Well, there is the group, the Naz, and um, Bowie, of course, saying he was the Naz. Um, but I'm thinking, Billie Holiday, the notes she sang or that were played as she sang were jazz. And business could be all that jazz, all that funny business you do. So let's check this one. It is right. So I seem to be getting in on Paul's wavelength um, magically. Don't ask me how. All right, now a bit. Oh, so it does look like it could be... A is simply A, and then maybe a short three-letter word for bit that has to go backwards. And then it's going to be now enabled again. Well, if we could put words in Irish, Irish, but uh, I don't think it's going to be that, meaning again. Um, a new, maybe? Let's try a new and uh, check this. It is right. A bit screwed back now. Oh, um, it's a hidden clue with a reversal. So I don't know what the cryptic mystic does for that. Does he ring the bell twice or play the bell sound backwards, but starting with the A and enabled and going backwards, you get a new, and it means again. All right. Uh, here was my most odd. Yeah, so I don't think it's going to be ever. Well, it could be. But I have a feeling it's going to be the air, double E-R. Let me look up the synonyms for oddest. Ah, the adventure is a quest. And if you do put that poetical air inside, you get queerest for most odd. All right, let's look at our, ooh. Oh, um, yes. We may even have had this one before, in which case I should have thought of it sooner, but your countenance is your face, and if you countenance something, you tolerate it. Now our, oh yeah, so um, I'm thinking a Manhattan is a cocktail. Uh, let's see, peace covering biscuit. Oh, man, I think is the chess piece. 
Well, what is the um, bit skirt? I don't see a bit skirt in there at all. No, I have no idea how the word play piece. What else could it be? I, I do wonder if biscuit might be slang for a hat. But then we have, um, oh, maybe it's piece. Maybe it's um, not one word going around another. Maybe it's three synonyms, man hat for your covering that makes more sense but then biscuit is a tan oh my goodness i'm of course i have biscuits on the brain um i'm getting hungry uh it's the color biscuit is tan oh, of course of course all right goodness gracious maybe this is a tramp i but it's not chap obviously uh, well, it could be, but then it would end in H-A-P. I don't think that's right. Oh, a, an old fellow could be a coot. I do like that. Um, yeah, could it then end in an A-T-I-O... Oh, no, I was going to say A-T-I-O-N, but... Old fellow... Um, well, let's try the anagram helper with coot and a tramp I qualified. Um, something like a competitor. Oh, a uh, Comper, comparation might be a word. And so I think it's qualified in a grammatical sense. Um, I think that's a, a, the right anagram with, uh, oh no, that's, a, no, it has to be a coot around the, well, I'm going to check it. I uh, compare, uh, oh my goodness, let me pause and check what letters I am missing. Oh, I, I do want it to be a coot. What else could an old fellow be? Let me pause and double check this. Oh, of course, it's a comparative and the old fellow is a cove, not a coot. <laughs> okay. All right, the bottom half is done. We just have, yeah, I knew this top right was going to be trouble. But China, oh, uh, if that's the definition, then porcelain fits nicely. Um, R, I think is going to be simply R, and Chile must be C-E. Um, on the outside, breaking clear. Ooh, we have plain on the outside. Is that nice? Not, um, oh yes, yeah, so sorry. Chile on the outside are the C and the E. I don't know if that is the uh, abbreviation for Chile, or, but I think it's just the outer letters, so R, C, E, and outside, I'll oh, sorry, on the outside, and then that word, those letters are breaking a word for clear. If something is clear, it is plain. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm thinking this must be a peasant. Could be a farmer. I don't know if a peasant has to be a farmer, but anyway, I think um, small vegetarian gifts are peas uh, but I don't get the rest of it detailing maybe just it's a mate they're making up a word from somebody with peas is a peasant I don't know 
<laughs> Let's check this. It is correct, but I don't follow that at all. Now, my little taste. Oh, um, I think a pair of teeth fits. Of course, it makes me think of the old joke that someone was so stupid that they thought an aperitif was a set of uh, dentures. Um, so how does the word play? In an elephant's... Oh, I think it is a homophone, actually, just like the joke, a pair of teeth. Uh, so uh, I'm sure if 15 squared is up, there will be people complaining about that homophone. Now, transported cases, fully made. Ah, I think um, transported is toted. And that cases or goes around all for fully. And um, then totaled is made, oh, I suppose, in the sense of all of these together made something, like three and five made eight, uh, three and five totaled to eight. Yeah, I can see that. I will check this, though. That is right. All right, just this one now. Charge specifying Liz's fella commonly Oh, of course it could have been a Queen Elizabeth. Oh, her fellow was Phil. But uh, that doesn't seem to be right. Um, so what's a four-letter word for a charge? Our charge. Mm. And Liz. Uh, is there a famous Liz I don't know about in Britain? I'm going to put in Paul just um, just because. Let's check it. No. Oh, oh, is it um, aperitif? Yeah, I, I never checked my aperitif. Yeah, there we go. My spelling lets me down again. Oh, maybe it is um, Phil, and maybe it's F I L L. Yes, so to charge, um, to charge your glass, I think means to fill your glass. Uh, so I think that's fine. All right, let's check all, confirm, check all. Looks like everything is still there, so I didn't make any further mistakes. All right, let's see if 15 squared is up and running. Well, thankfully, 15 squared is back. Um, today's blog is by Ken Mack. Helpfully provides the full filled in. Oh, and um, using a very different format where we see the clue, the answer, and then the explanation. That's nice. Uh, I think on the across is P... Oh, P. Santa. Is that right? A red cloaked seasonal gentleman carrying a P. I'm not sure about that. Oh, but I did. Yeah, I forgot about the detailing. I even explained that I was removing the last letter, so. Yeah, it's, it's, I think, maybe just a little too cryptic. And, yeah, pi is just somehow meaning good. We'll see if anyone in the comments expands on that. Sounds like a reference to the late Prince Philip, assuming she called him Phil. Well, I think everyone called him uh, Phil. Um... And yeah, speechifying for the homophone. Uh, on the downs, George Brack, yes. Yeah, if a lady loses her bra, she's nude. 
Yeah, I would question that part myself. Uh, so trousers on is bagged, just as I thought, which goes around re plus le li minus the i. I did uh, get the tan biscuit color, and it looks like uh, Ken Mack also may have got that wrong. Um, 16. Oh my goodness, the cold <laughs> Casio people, calculating people are Casio inside on in on so so obvious when you see it written out and then the holiday notes was billy holiday yeah all right and cot was cotangent all right um yeah people i think we're just correcting ken mac but i want to see if somebody mentions Hi, but maybe that's it's used often and people are just familiar with it. Uh, K with no diacritic means that introducing subordinate clauses. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, so K uh, meaning what needs a little acute. Uh, so thank you to Anna for that. Uh, yes. The homophone horribilis paratif. All right. Yeah, but I'm still not seeing anyone talking about pi. If uh, you're familiar with that expression, please let me know in the comments. All right. Well, uh, I did enjoy that and happy that I somehow honed in on the correct meaning of a few that were very cryptic, but there were a few I messed up. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Thanks as always for watching, and have a great day and a great weekend.